Hello, my name is Cheryl Erickson and I am the Indigenous Focused ECE Instructor with Louis Riel Vocational College. Today's video will summarize Chapter 9 of Early Learning and Child Care Overview. Please ensure that you are reading Chapter 9 of your Morrison text as this video does not replace your daily chapter readings. So Chapter 9 of Early Learning and Child Care Overview discusses infants and toddlers and the foundation years, which are the foundation years for early learning. When we see infants, um, or when you see infants rather, uh, what do you think of in terms of development? It's actually the most amazing uh, year of uh, life is the first year. Uh, children grow with leaps and bounds. So you have a newborn infant who relies primarily on the mother for feeding, um, caring for them, uh, meeting their every need. And to a year later, uh, them independently moving around and exploring their environment. So what we know about infants is that in that first year, that 12 to 24 months, um, they uh, grow and they develop. Um, they uh, grow in all four developmental domains. So uh, social, emotional, uh, physical, cognitive. Uh, we look at them as unique individuals. Uh, we should never make a comparison from one, from one infant to the next infant. And we know that their development is influenced by many things such as gender, uh, socioeconomic background, their culture, their family background, and uh, nutrition, uh, and health as well. Culture and development plays a key role in, in infant development. And so when we look at infants and as individuals and those family dynamics, culture plays a, a big role in um, their development and learning process. So simple things um, that you might not even think of regarding um, those influences are, are they bottle fed? Are they breastfed? Um, depending on that culture, um, breastfeeding could be an automatic or depending on the culture and, um, you know, where they live or uh, the industry, uh, if, if it's a mom that's immediately going back to work, bottle feeding it may be the only um, option. So feeding solid foods is very different um, for every family and within each culture. Some um, start solid foods earlier than others. Toileting, napping, uh, the use of comfort items and discipline are all very unique to families and culture. Um, and, and why I, I point that out is um, because you, when you enroll an infant, you see uh, enroll an infant in a, a daycare program, you see many different uh, cultural, cu uh, cultural customs um, that you're going to have to adapt to. Um, my experience in infant care uh, in the last few years has been many infants come to you uh, from families that co-sleep. And for a child that's never slept alone um, in a crib by themselves, this is very challenging and it's, it's very new and it's very scary for them. And so that adjustment into your program is going to take longer because not only are you transitioning them into care, you're transitioning them from uh, a, a way of life that they know at that time and that they only go to sleep and sleep with a parent. And so it's very different and we have to be... Um, very mindful of that. We've gained a lot of research about infants and toddlers and how they develop. Um, we look at the year 2000, it's 2019 and we've been studying children for um, hundreds of years. There's been many theories uh, regarding children's development. There's so much technology. We know so much more about how children learn and grow and develop than ever before. So we've terms that are in your textbook, such as natural shearing or pruning, uh, selective elimination of synopsis is, um, you know, basically the loss of brain cells. If you don't use them, you lose them. And so uh, brain connections are very, very important in infant development and that stimulation uh, is, is very important um, because those uh, brain synopsis, those um, 
um, path, neural pathways are all being developed um, in, in that first year. It's, it's the greatest development um, occurring in, in life. So we want them to, to maintain those, uh, those uh, connections. Um, age appropriate experiences are very, very necessary and within those sensitive periods as well. And so when I see that, um, you know, you, when you're approaching an infant uh, and toddler and you're providing them with, with materials and, and things to play with, they should be appropriate to that age of, of development. So, um, for example, you're not going to, um, you know, you're not going to give a baby that's a day old uh, a, a rattle or a, a toy to, to, to shake because um, that isn't in their development uh, right right now. A, a newborn infant is their their most important um, um, the most important thing they do, or the learning that they're doing is is a, of, is involved around um, sucking. Um, sucking is the first response to uh, the first almost behavior an infant. Uh, exhibits and that's because it's a survival thing it's it's how they they eat how they look for food um, brain research uh, as far as as babies uh, go um, babies are born to learn um, language has said to uh, start to develop before a baby is even born and uh, what I mean by that is uh, when moms are, are pregnant uh, they're often talking to their infant they're playing music uh, so infants are born almost, or rather, infants are born um, with the ability to recognize the voice of their mother. Uh, brain development is a lifelong, is lifelong learning for children, uh, and it's a combination of nature versus nurture. So environmental learning as well as uh, the, the innate characteristics uh, that are unique to uh, each of us or our, our families. Those early life experiences have lifelong influences on how children learn, grow, and develop. And so one of the biggest um, issues in infancy is safety, security, and attachment. Uh, the foundation of attachment is huge for, for infants in the sense that if a child isn't, doesn't have a secure attachment, they're not going to feel safe. Uh, they're going to be insecure, uncertain, and it does affect uh, how they learn and grow and develop. The human brain is very plastic, uh, which means that, um, you know, things such as secure to, uh, insecure attachment within that first year of life is really important. However, if in that, you know, uh, second year of life, uh, a secure attachment is formed and a child feels safe and secure, uh, the brain alters, it's, it's molded and um, mended and a child will, will uh, their development will foster. It will be a positive experience for them. An enriched environment with many um, uh, hands-on, many positive experiences, um, in increases that uh, that developmental process as well. So some of the key concepts for infant development that we look at is uh, chronological age, uh, is in their chronological age or where they are um, assessed developmentally. So chronological chronological age meaning um, the day you were born, um, the year you were born. Uh, sometimes doesn't reflect uh, where you are uh, developmentally. So for example, a child that's three years old um, at their date, according to their date of birth and birthday, may be assessed uh, at a uh, two-year-old level. So there is some cognitive, um, maybe some cognitive delays, and they aren't um, at that um, at that chronological age level. And when I also say that, I think it's important to remember again, even though you're three, it doesn't mean that you do uh, everything a three-year-old should, should do. Uh, eat, when you're one, it doesn't mean you walk. Uh, typically around the age of one, children will walk. 
Uh, however, some children walk at 10 months and some children walk at 18 months. So it all depends on your uh, development and it's unique to, to all children. Again, um, adults need to provide those um, uh, really uh, enriched learning environments which offers language and literacy, um, toys for children to manipulate, um, objects to play with, just a, a wide variety, construction, um, hands-on types of learning uh, because it does uh, really foster that development. And again, infants learn through sucking, grasping, and looking. That's the first, uh, the first learning that takes place for a, a baby. Uh, and the, as infants learn, grow, and develop, uh, they evolve. So it's almost like stages that they go through. So for example, you know, before you can, um, before you can walk, you need to be able to learn to crawl, to, to pull yourself up um, onto furniture. We just don't, one day a baby just doesn't get up and walk. There's certain processes that they go through that leads up to uh, walking. Characteristics of infant and toddler motor development. So development is sequential. So for example, before a child can sit up, they need to be able to uh, hold their head. They, they need to develop uh, some neck strength. They need to develop torso strength and that gets them to the point of sitting up. And um, you know, from sitting, uh, they'll start to, to move, whether it's crawling, they'll usually, you know, uh, babies crawl in different ways. Sometimes they, uh, you know, just kind of slide their bum to um, rolling over. There's just different steps that lead up to that process. So um, part of our experience is gonna be um, uh, spending time in an infant program in hopes that you can see some of, of these uh, sequential steps uh, in development. And, and so having said that, infants develop from head to toe, so cephal to caudal development. So that means one of the first things that infants develop is the ability to hold their, their head. Uh, and their neck muscles need to be developed and strengthened in order for them to be able to hold their head. So a newborn infant, we always support their head and neck because that, there's, there's no strength in that. And, ox, and then the next stage is proximal to distal. So it means they, they develop uh, torso strength and you develop uh, arm strength before finger and you crawl before you walk. Uh, so your legs develop before your feet develop. So it's all a, a, a process uh, in, in that evolves over time. Toilet training is another uh, step in development as well and, and, and a lot of that has to do with um, that self-regulation and, and your body learning and, and growing. Um, why is outdoor play necessary? Outdoor play, uh, th there's so many um, uh, interesting mediums and visuals that you uh, partake in in outdoor play from running and climbing and um, rolling around, hopping, uh, playing in the sand, seeing the natural elements around is really important for, for overall development as well. So when it comes to infants and toddlers and how they learn, language development is huge. Um, like I, I mentioned earlier, infants um, learn language before they're born. Uh, we're talking to them in the womb. Um, language helps define us as human. Um, you know, where would we be if we weren't able to communicate um, and tell people what, our, what we needed, what we wanted? Um, infants typically communicate to us through, through crying and, and we're trying to figure out what it is. Are you hungry? Are you tired? Do you need a diaper change? So that's the first kind of language that um, is, is displayed. Um, you know, uh, there's hereditary factors. Babies are born hardwired with an internal biological mechanism to learn. Uh, and there's the environmental uh, side of it where um, language development uh, increases through those live interactions with others. 
and in, in engaging and talkative parents. And that is also reflected in why, in a lot of cases, there has been so many initiatives, um, such as Head Start or the Healthy Baby programs or uh, prenatal programs, because it's teaching uh, new mothers and, and, and new families uh, the importance of literacy and, and why we need to start talking uh, and why it's important to sing uh, to our child because it, it sparks thought. Um, it's a lot of repetition. They're learning words. It's, it's the start of language development. So some other characteristics of language development, um, the sequence of language, uh, baby singing. Uh, so we're, we're singing songs um, uh, like um, uh, round and round the garden on their hands. Uh, it's stimulating. Uh, it's a sensory, they feel it. We're tickling their toes. We're doing little finger plays with them and we're, in, we're engaging. Uh, and that's, that has many, um, it means many different needs. Not only are we encouraging literacy, we're, we're touching, uh, we're engaging in conversation, we're um, developing that relationship, that, that sensitivity, that security attachment. And, and that's all important to development. Those first words, um, the, a baby typically will start language with one word. Uh, it could be da, could be mom, it could be um, baba for bottle. So it's usually not, you know, a, a word, but uh, a word that we as a mom or dad understand and um, will recognize and maybe re, uh, rephrase. Oh, you want your bottle or yes, I'm dad or things like that. So we're teaching them the right, um, you know, the right ways to, um, to, to speak. And so there's various, there's various ways we go through, uh, they go through language development and we're, we're stimulating sentences uh, are created, um, you know, often in that first, um, uh, language they're they're speaking uh, they're using me um, they, they mix up he she or say boy girl so there's different types of stages of language development that children go through as far as uh, infants and toddlers and psychosocial and emotional development um, the first stage of uh, Erickson's uh, theory of trust versus, versus mistrust is a huge um, part of it. And so um, Erickson's trust versus mistrust or Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs where those basic needs, uh, food, shelter, um, love, uh, security need to be met in order for you to um, develop to, to feel safe and develop develop is is a huge component in infancy and so we as parents are, are trying to meet the needs of that baby we figure it out through crying that they need something and we want to meet their needs uh, whether they're hungry um, we're trying to figure them out and we get to know them and they get to know that we're meeting their needs I cried and I got fed I cried and my diaper was changed mom sang to me so there's nice positive interactions that put a baby at ease and, and trust is built and that's the the start of learning as well and so attachment relationships um, ha are, have different components to it. There's bonding. Um, you hear that term, um, mother-child bond. You know, that's a, 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 a relationship. Development, attachment behaviors. Um, you know, uh, uh, an interesting, I always find it very interesting that um, well, and now our mat leave is a little bit longer, but children typically enter care um, and their parents typically go back to work around a year and a year and a half. And that is the time where uh, separation anxiety is at its peak. And so children have established um, that mom and dad are safe and they're comfortable with mom and dad and they're the most important people in their life. And so it makes a transition into a child care center very difficult because they need to make that attachment or develop that relationship with the caregivers in that program. 
in order to uh, feel good, in order to be comfortable. So uh, a typical baby will struggle coming into a center. It'll take them a while to adjust and it'll take them a while to develop that relationship and feel comfortable. And when that is happening, uh, until they're, they're feeling safe and secure and comfortable, they're not eating well in the center and they're not sleeping well in the center. And so once that comfort sets in, those needs uh, change and they do eat and they do sleep. Um, so babies can have multiple attachments. They can be attached to mom, to dad, to grandma, to grandpa. They can be attached to a caregiver at a daycare center. Uh, quality of attachments is huge. Um, a good solid attachment gives that child, that infant, that sense of safety and security um, and that, that fosters development. So if for some reason they don't have a strong attachment with a parent but they have a strong attachment with a grandparent, that will help foster that development as long as they have an attachment. The quality of infant and child programs and environments are huge to that development as well. So we want to ensure that we're incorporating developmentally appropriate programs. So in an infant program, the toys should be geared to the developmental ages of, of the infants. And it should be things that infants can easily grasp in their hands. Things that are not too small to pose a choking hazard, but are large enough for them to be able to pick up to manipulate. Um, um, things that they can mouth. Um, mouthing is a, a big uh, part of toddlerhood and they, they learn about um, the materials around them by putting them in their mouths. Um, things for them to climb on safely, um, to pull their bodies up. Uh, a wide space for them to move around and explore their environment is huge. Curriculum is going to promote relationships, meet the needs of the children, meet the interests of the children. So lots of hands-on um, opportunities and exploration. And that environment needs to be safe for the children. So you're not going to have a lot of equipment in there that could cause them to fall into um, or bang their heads on. Uh, your surfaces should be um, something that, um, you know, if they fall that they're not going to hurt themselves. So not a concrete floor, some mats or carpeting that, that, that uh, is safe for them to, to move around. Accommodating, uh, accommodating diverse learners, and again I say that in each chapter uh, we do accommodate, we do talk about accommodating diverse learners. Uh, how do we co accommodate diverse learners in an infant and toddler program? And typically in an infant and toddler program, you, you have an age range of as young as three months to two years of age. So in having said that, that's diverse learners in itself. So uh, again, you're going to have a, a wide variety of um, toys and equipment and material to meet the needs of all children. Your space is going to be uh, open and accessible because uh, that's something that should be promoted in infant care that allows exploration. Uh, one of the things that um, I always say is, is really important in infant development is, is to, in, in centers, not to have those types of toys that uh, confine children. So those exosaucers or um, any type of, of chairs that keep them confined in one space because that's not uh, effective for them, their development. It, their development should allow them to, to, to move and, and grow. Um, Self-regulation, that's uh, a child's ability to gain control of their body and their body functions. So for example, toilet training, uh, they be uh, able to manage their emotions successfully. Uh, attention skills is another uh, part of self-regulation. And, um, you know, all of that uh, is important to that uh, toddler development. There is a goodness of fit. Um, you really have to have a connection with that child. If you're disconnected and you're not understanding, you, uh, it, it's not going to promote uh, positive development. And in some situation, it might um, be something that makes a child feel uh, some disconnect or uncertainty and, and that's not good for um, the child's development. It's really important to build relationships uh, in our infant programs. Our ratios are one to four, uh, which allows us uh, throughout the day um, to spend some one-on-one -on -one time. 
with the children. And, and that's really important uh, to develop that uh, relationship and to make connections with that particular child and to know their interests, to know where they are developmentally. Um, and then again, that's uh, really uh, developing those self-regulations. I also want to mention in an infant program, uh, infants don't follow a, a rigid uh, schedule. In the program, the schedules should work around their needs. So we don't have nap time at a specific time. Infants should nap when they need to nap. Uh, and again, that is uh, important for their development. And they should be eating when they're hungry because uh, that's meeting their needs. And again, it's important to their development. So that concludes uh, chapter nine of uh, early learning and child care overview and taking a look at uh, infants and toddlers and their development. So please do see your instructor if you have any questions or need some clarification on anything discussed today. Also check in with your instructor to ensure that you haven't missed any handouts for this chapter or uh, assignments pertaining to chapter nine. Mm -hmm.